How often have you looked at a magazine and thought to yourself, I'd like to meet the cover model on that magazine? <laughs> well, I'm privileged this evening to be able to do exactly that because recently, Pick a Bay and the National Stockfell Association of South Africa announced a new partnership. Stockfells will get 1% paid back in smart shopper points and retailers will get more foot traffic in its hyper shops. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield and tonight I ask cover model and chief executive of the National Stockfell Association, Andile Mazwai, what it's all about. You've teamed up with big corporate. This is an unlikely alliance. This is informal sector, formal sector. Are they colliding or are they merging happily? Hopefully merging happily. Good evening and thank you, Bruce, for having me on the show. What we've done from our side is to say, let's try and put our arms around this thing called Stockfell. Because Stockfells exist on a Wednesday evening once a month and then they disappear again. And often when business wants to do business with Stockfells, they find them not there. Or you wait for the big buying season and it's a hit or miss if you're in business. How do you get a situation where you're able to communicate mm -hmm. with the Stockfells through a period of time and then mobilize them when you are then running your campaign? That's the promise we've made to pick and pay and they've bought into that. Now, you have shared the numbers with us before, but run them through us again in terms of the amount of money that is estimated, because nobody knows, no. that is believed to be kept in jars, in tea canisters, under mattresses, in homes and in stock fells across the country. 50 billion rand. Five zero, zero. billion rand. And that's as scientific billion. as what? It's as scientific as what people save and consume. So if you look at the sort of numbers that the retailers make towards the, the end of the year, if you look at what's collected through burial societies, those numbers then do stack up. Okay, so Sokvel's made up of various things. Burial societies yeah. is one. You, you, you're a member of effectively a personal insurance business. Correct. that You make one payment and you die. The funeral is covered. You may pay 90 installments uh, and finally get <laughs> to benefit from your from yes. your burial plan. But also, they're saving Stockfells. Correct. And you've been trying to formalize, if that's the right word, the Stockfell industry um, in a way that actually gives access by Stockfells into the formal sector in a way that is palatable yeah. to the Stockfells yeah. and profitable for the service providers. It has to be. Stockfells exist. It's a human experience. You get together with your mates over a dinner, over a braai, and you, have, you hatch up a plan to go on some sporting event at the end of the year. You figure out how much it's going to cost, you collect the money and you go. That's a human experience. At what point then do you think, if only Mazwai was here to help us? Okay, yeah. so no, all right. For the most part, for the most part, people get on with what they do. The difficulty comes in when corporates want to tap in and then you go through the legislation which states that a stock file, in order to be legal, has to belong to an association approved by the Registrar of Banks. Yes. So you find that inevitably, stock files do small things on a small scale. How do you do it on a big scale? So NASASA comes in as a National Stock file Association to say, join the association. There's no registration fee, there's no membership fee. Just come and join us. Now we'll be able to go to a pick and pay, have a chat with them about what we can then do together. So it does help both sides of the equation. Okay, now, so in order to be a legal stockfell, you do have to be registered. Correct. And the Reserve Bank has to recognize you, but there've got to be lots of stockfells that are informal. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that every <laughs> so a member of a stockfell has gone, you know what, we need to be legal about this. <laughs> Who's going to catch us? Well, the research says there are about 800,000 groups out there. We've registered 110,000 groups. That's impressive. Thank you. No, that is impressive. A lot of people don't get it. No, no, it's but 110,000 I mean, uh, okay. groups. I mean, just, uh, okay, I need to, uh, just to get a sense of the formality of these groups. You've got some photographs of Stockfell meetings here. These are incredibly well organized community events. Yes. And you've got to break into these communities get the trust of communities, yep. to get them to buy and to be part of a, a, an association, which means they're traceable. Yes. And it, it, it makes, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it does raise the risk for them if they are not entirely above board. Correct. So you, look, the ones that are the skellums, and I'll say it out loud, are the pyramid schemes. Yeah. And they're forever at our heels wanting to get some sort of legitimacy from us, but sooner or later they can't run with us because they are frauds. The ones that are really interesting are the guys who are doing proper things and they do want to take their game to the next level. Typically, a stock fell will save to consume. 
So it's great when the consumption happens, and that's December event typically. January comes and... But the time value of money, from the money I started saving in January, I put 100 bucks into the yeah. stock fill every single month. By December, the 100 bucks I put in is worth only 95 bucks or 94 bucks because it's been eroded by inflation. No. It's not an efficient way of, of, of saving. I'll argue with you. You put 100 bucks into a stock fill once a month, let's call it 10 months because not okay. that was going in January. Okay, okay true. You will get 1,000 rand. Yeah. Okay, so you will do in you'll, 10 months. I'm saying you'll in 10 months, because 10 times 100 yeah. is 1,000 Rand, right? How does the growth happen? No, before we get to growth, would you on your own have had the discipline to put 100 bucks aside? That's why they exist. And that's yeah. why they exist. From if you receive a pay slip, then you are going to put some money in contractual savings. If you don't, as a majority of South Africans, if you're informally employed, what is it that's going to make you save your money? So we give them a big tick to say you have saved. You can't talk investment no. until you've saved. Absolutely. But you're wanting to take these stock fails and bring them into the 21st century in terms of saying, guys, there is an opportunity here to do so much more with the capital that you're saving. No, I'm taking the 21st century to the stock fails. Ah! We went down to our friends at Investment Solutions and said, we've got stock fails that want to buy unit trusts. Guess what? It took us 12 months, actually 13 months, to get the compliance right such that the money from stock files could be taken to unit trust. The last time we chatted, we're close this time, we're there, we've got five. Five groups have taken their money, gone through the regulatory compliance rigmarole, and actually now, as a stock file, own unit trust. And that's the only house in town that'll do it because the 21st century hasn't come to Stockfells. Yeah, okay. And, and the 21st and Stockfells <laughs> haven't, uh, haven't blown away the 21st century financial services companies enough. Are investment solutions happy with the quid pro quo that has come through? It's been a slog. It's been yeah. hard work. It's the usual story. It's mutual trust. It's mutual trust. I don't think any of us knew to take us this long, but the reward is certainly there. The understanding between now the guys on this side of the highway and the guys on that side of the highway is that much stronger in terms of what is investment advice? What should I put my money in? What is the time value of money? What is inflation? And what are my genuine expectations with regard to returns? Okay, now tell me about the pick and pay deal because this will raise the profile of the Stockville Association. It will certainly will, um, and if there's a benefit that comes through uh, with Smart Shopper, then that's gonna be seen to, to have a monetary value. I am a former stockbroker, and one of the early lessons that I was taught about as a stockbroker was when Mr. Ackerman goes to the market to buy tomatoes, he gets a different price when I go in. And that's really what mm. we're trying to do for the stock fails. If each individual group goes into a store to try and negotiate something for itself, it's going to get that far. Yeah. Surely with the whole association. So the real deal is with the pick and pay. Everybody knows the brand, but how do you get the brand to be front of mind within the Stockfell groups throughout the period that when they come to making their buying decision, this is specifically yeah. grocery groups, they are going to want to go to that brand. And that's where we then come in to say, consistently through our magazine, through all our other media channels, we will be promoting the, stock, the pick and pay brand amongst our Stockfells such that they will be mobilized around them when they want to make their purchases. And famously, White Bisson, chief executive of ShopRite, which arguably has got a better footprint to reach Stockfell members than Pick and Pay might have. It's Pick and Pay traditionally has been very middle class and suburban. Um, ShopRite, through its multiple brands, gets into, into communities all over the place. He very famously said, what do I need a, a rewards program for? Finally, um, he might r realize why this is a beneficial. Yeah, we can go around and around. All I'll say is the very guys who say that, just ask them ask to see their wallets and see what benefit card they have mm. and see how their behavior on a big ticket item like an airline ticket, they will chase points. Whether it's a hobby, it's a fetish or whatnot, as humans, we can't get away from the idea that there's a deal and if I don't belong to part of this club, I'm gonna miss out on something that is there for me. It's FOMO. FOMO, the fear of missing <laughs> out. It's the fear of missing out. Practically, how does the pick and pay deal work? I am in a stock fell and I go into a pick and pay and I fill a trolley. What happens next? The pick and pay deal belongs to pick and pay. Where the threshold of the door is, is the dividing line. Outside is our job. Market, promote, motivate the guys, get them in. 
when they're in, the deals that they're going to be given is a deal that pick and pay is then going to do. Okay, and that deal is points on, 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 on their smart, smart, shop. on, on smart shopper cards. It's, it's going to be wrapped up in their smart shopper product, but that's a proprietary thing to a yeah. pick and pay, and they will then deliver that. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> so you've, got, you've done unit trusts, you've done a smart shopper deal, that's two big benefits for, for stock fails, Yeah, but you obviously need to do more. We've done something with Celsi, okay. well, Glow Cell Celsi, uh, the one that's really getting us excited is to be able to do something with burial societies. Burial societies, as you've described, mm -hmm. you put your money in. These are people who know you. These are the people who are going to bury you. And what's happened over the years is that you've got brokers coming in on the left and you've got undertakers coming on on the right and they're squeezing these guys. Mm -hmm. Look, they both offer good products. The problem is there's no recourse. You can't really fight hard for yourself when you're gone. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. I pay my monthly premium, I die and then I claim. What if my loved ones don't know that I had this policy with this company? Yeah. What if they don't know where my ID book is so that they can claim when I'm gone? Small things but big issues. And only after those negative experiences are people going back to the burial society and saying, if there were 60 of us in the society, we don't have to argue about such administrative things, we know that these people are going to be able to carry the funeral. We, we, we look after our own because we want to be looked after. Absolutely. Do you miss stockbroking? Sometimes, not in these markets, no, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> in this heat wave when I'm out there on the streets, it would be nice to be in an air-conditioned office. But does this give you a better purpose than stockbroking, a better sense of purpose? At Barnard Jacobs Millet, we had 14,000 clients. I can't recall. I can't recall a client picking up the phone and saying, Mr. Mazwai, you bullied me into that investment. It worked out well, thank you. I don't remember that. Do Stockfells do that? In every single community hall meeting we go to, people say thank you for coming. Yeah, very different game. There we go, lovely. I'm Dile Mazwai, the Chief Executive of the National Stockfell Association of South Africa. Thank you for watching. More money saving, more money making stories on The Money Makers next time. Till then, have a very good evening. Bye bye.